Ooh, what is up guys, and of course, welcome to our Wi-Fi battle with Kills World, of course, that's Skyrender, and today we're going up against, of course, Hanapana in an NU game, and before going in, my voice is kind of cracky, and it's just because I'm sick, so if that bothers you, then yeah, too bad, basically, deal with it, and the question of the day is, of course, what did you think about Nintendo Switch, which of course was announced last week? Pretty darn cool if you ask me, but yeah, I really want to know what you guys thought about it, because it's clearly something new. And now going of course into this Wi-Fi battle, uh, there was like originally a live Wi-Fi battle, but I couldn't upload it due to it getting flaggings for one song I was using. And they wanted to get my revenue, or basically I couldn't use that whatsoever. Now I do actually don't mind giving them the whole dollar that this video is collecting, but no, they still didn't want to do it, so here we are. So, basically, I'm gonna do a post-narrated game. Don't worry, though, it's a great battle against Hanapano, who's a jelly scary person. Um, this team that I'm using is just a guts team with um, one defensive, Mao, of course, being Gorgeist, and, of course, um, Ariados with stick webs. Pretty darn straightforward. And we're going against Miltank, Charizard, Gastrodon, Hitmonchan, Trevenant, the Minetri. So, super, super powerful team, and a lot of good checking from her part. So, all I really can do is basically hurt things that hurt things hard and hope outspeed the things that matters because it's speed enough to outspeed the whole team of both shards on the trick. So I need webs up and I need shards are gone. So with of course all this said, let's see what happened. Oh yeah, I also decided to lead off with Ramperdos, figuring that she would probably lead with Manetric. Um at least Ramperdos can take a hit as she st does start with Manetric, which is awesome. Lockdown, of course, the Ramper does can just go for a save rock slide. And while I could have gone for a crunch here predicting the Gastrodon, I really, really didn't want to give that a gamble as a rock slide will prove to do a lot of damage on Gastrodon. I mean, it's probably defensive. We see the leftovers, but that is, you know, share four life orb and it just, it just do a bit too much. Now, crunch is a 40% hit, but really, I don't want to risk the skull as I go for Balrog. Of course, being the monster that is Golgeist. As she goes for it, power luckily for me and not Skull, I mean, Burn is just not something I want to have. And uh, yeah, from this point on, I really just can't force her out. There is really not a whole lot she can do. And um, <clears throat> I am free now to actually go for potential Willow, which of course will backfire because it's a Charizard on the field. <laughs> so I decided, fair enough, I'll go to Meltdown and of course Flareon because she could go for a Fire Blast, which she does, luckily for me, and it doesn't do a whole lot. And uh, Facade, of, or the um, Guts will kick in now with the Toxic Orb. So I'm just going for a Facade because I have for the base, of course, in Special Defense. That means we will survive as we are able to KO, of course, the Charizard with a Facade. But unlucky for me, I should say, the, the Toxic will take a toll on me and... Uh, I basically are in a position here where I have to sack the Flareon and I can't outspeed anything on our team and my Nature is freely to come in and KO me but I'm just going to do a quick attack getting some damage in there and I, when I say some damage I mean 50% basically that did a lot damn so anyway Flareon proved to be extremely useful here as my Nature is a Weaver down to health, hot health as I'm just going to bring Kasik and uh, while she goes for a Volt Switch I do believe I decided to go for uh, I think a superpower, I think I went for here, trying to remember. Uh, I think so, I think I went for as much time as possible, being that she has still had Gastrodon. I went for Crunch, alright, fair enough. And Crunch, of course, with no Guts boost doesn't do a whole lot, but eventually, you know, Guts will kick in, and I am free now, of course, to go for Facade, getting the maximum damage output, which is close enough of killing her, but sadly not enough. Luckily though, Recover doesn't recover more than what Facade was doing in combination with, of course, the Leftovers. So I can just keep spamming. Her only way of actually managing this is definitely switching to Trevenant and taking that hit. Or, of course, trying to manage to survive the hit and go over Earth Power to try to kill me. She does survive with a Slit of Health. Like, shit, she did that. And of course, KO Kasik, which is terrible. So, anyway, I'm gonna go to, of course, my uh, Ariados now. Feeling that, or I will outspeed her because... Gastron is base 39 speed, I am base 40, yeah, Gastron is actually slow, but still faster because she has speed investment in, of course, my freaking, <laughs> or speed in the freaking speed, um, uh, which it sucks, obviously, because she get a hit on me, well, it doesn't do a whole lot, it's still one of those things, like, how, how did that happen, so, right, she'll go to free rocks here, of course, there's really nothing I can do all outside of going for Toxic, so at this point, I'm basically gonna get my hazards up, or hazard, I'm gonna get hazard up with, of course, 
Um, stick web is only hazard I have, of course, on this Ariados. But I am max defense, so I shouldn't be able to worry too much, of course, about this mill tank. Or at least so I thought till I saw Heal Bell and do realize that, yeah, this is a matchup I won't win. Uh, would have been much easier if Toxic just took a toll on her and the matchup would kill her. But no, that, that is not what's gonna happen. And um, basically, here I'm gonna try to stay in as uh, just see how much Body Slam do. And that's not a lot. That is definitely not a lot. Ariados can take that all day. Since, of course, with combination of Protect and uh, Liftovers, I am actually able to survive body slams for almost all day but uh, I can stall the body slam definitely but that's not the way I'm gonna do it hell that will never work in the long run so predicting here that she probably want to keep going for body slams um, I'm basically gonna go for another willow because I'm figuring she probably be sap zipper since the body slam missed now so now that is definitely the case she's not scrappy and she actually switches out to Hitmonchan, which is great, because that shuts down the Hitmonchan against me. There is simply no worries at this point. So I can freely now just go for us, and TZ is thinking that she probably could have Ice Punch or Fire Punch. And uh, that would be basically the best way of me of trying to deal with. Um, which, luckily for me, it showcased at least she doesn't have that, or very unlikely that she has that at least. And... Uh, well, I could go for a Will-O-Wisp here, I don't necessarily want to risk it, so I'm just going to go for Lockdown, take an opportunity as she goes for, of course, Heal Bell. And I know Superpower is 80% hit with Life Orb, but without a doubt, but I need to reveal damage. Rock Slide is the better call to make there. And it's a 50% hit as she goes for Body Slam and um, Paralyzation. Yeah, mm -mm. finally, finally, right? You know, I had a golden opportunity, but nah, -uh, we are not gonna win the game like that. That is too easy. So she goes for a milk drink. I'm gonna go for superpower, hoping she keeps attacks me, which sadly doesn't happen. And superpower, as I predicted, is around an 80% hit hell, even 90. But um, it's no dice, and I basically am forced to switch out here because she's just gonna milk drink that away. And I am in a very, very bad spot in general. There's really nothing I can do. Paralyzed Ace Parlos is definitely a, a bad situation. As thinking that she will go for a milk drink, she actually goes for Body Slam. Oh no. Oh, not on Sangoose. Luckily, I don't get, of course, paralyzed here. But should be noted that I really need as much HP as possible because Toxic always will take a toll on me. And together with Self Rocks, I really can't switch this Pokemon in and out as much as I like to. And uh, it's basically free falling in HP due to that body slam alone. So she'll go to Swarm, of course, be in the Hitmonchan. And um, Quick Attack is not a one hit kill here. I have to switch out. And I'm going to switch into Balrog because I'm pretty sure she can, of course, kill me. And I do believe that prediction is completely right, as we see it having the Fist Plate. That had me laughing a bit. I had no idea it's called Fist Plate. So anyway, my neck is gonna come in as I take the opportunity yet again to go for a free Will-O-Wisp. Because she has nothing that soaks a Will-O-Wisp, but I could miss it, but that's about it. So at this position, all I can do is just go for Shadow Sneak. There is no way my Netric outspeeds me. While Flamethrower would be over a 50% hit on me, I'm very glad that I have access to Shadow Sneak to basically you know, take on what really needs to happen. So the heart rate is going to come in, and due to me knowing the speeds here, I know that I'm now faster than Prevenant. But she's speed investment, and has substitute, which means I missed the Willow, which is even worse. What makes this even tougher is that she'll go for Phantom Force. That combination basically had me crying, because I don't break the sub of course, but I also went for Fall Plague, thinking that she would do something else. But no, it's Phantom Force, and it is in full force. So I am forced here, of course, to sack Romper Dose. Though it did well, it was sadly crippled, heavily so. So I really need to give it a 1-up, as I just go back to Balrog. Now you lies core Shadow Sneak, but I actually need to break the sub. Well, I can't necessarily hurt it, I can at least switch in something else. And I have still Sangos available at this situation, but I really need to, of course, like I said, hurt him before he vanish. And, uh, or she vanish. It's a hard, hard tree, is a female actually, very very scary so, and I'm just gonna bring Dedrick here, my, um, I can actually, I don't know why I didn't say, switch in Sangers thinking about it, or probably the, not the optimal play, but then again it was not like this Pokemon's gonna do anything for me in this battle whatsoever anyway, so anyway gonna bring in Hulk, 
as of course, uh, oh yeah, it's because I don't want to receive the poison damage because I need this thing to survive a hit on chance. If now I remember, I am being dumb. Anyways, as uh, he switch in, of course, the Hitmonchan, and I go for knockoff, it's my safest play, and um, it's now in the area where, um, what do you call it, Hit Quick Attack will take her out, so I'm in a great position now, because I will survive the next round of Toxic, and I should be able to KO, of course, the Gore guys without any big issues here. Uh, as Gore guys, of course, gotta come in, I'm basically saying GG as um, she packs one thing that I did not think about and that is protect so she'll kick down the Sangus and I'm based in the area that where can can of course my what do you call it my Gore guy survive a fan of force from of course the Trevenant then it's the grass ghost against the grass ghost from generation 6 all I can do is go for some thesis I know the fan of force is coming uh, she goes for another sub and I guess that's both good and bad it's good because that means at least I didn't waste a turn off a will of wisping because there was no point of doing so and I can go for shadow sneak before she disappear break the sub and then I'm basically begging begging to be able to survive the phantom force and then retaliate with of course foul play but with seven all I know it's a shot in dark I know that so that's phantom force of course hitting me it's actually just about 50% and I actually win this game, and I had no idea how. I was basically at this point thinking, I lost, Hannah got the better of me, damage she made it better plays all the time. And what do you know? While it might hold true, Trevenant's power just wasn't enough to break Go Guys from full HP. It did a 60% hit, and it's a very, very acceptable 60%. It's a very respectable at that. But. Sadly, I should say, the massive amount of defenses that Gorgas is bringing was simply enough for Trevenant. So yeah, I have really nothing more to say about this game whatsoever. Um, the, I think the situation says it all. Trevenant actually not came on Gorgas. I do believe that's a game changer. That's pretty much what it's all about. Because had I lost from this point on, it wouldn't have bothered me. Because I think Hanna did the better plays in the end. You know, protect against Sangos to fall to Toxic. That's pretty darn scary, it's very smart of her doing so. So much so that I can only, you know, give her, you know, kudos for that. That's a very, very good play. And, uh, yeah, I am basically was, I was set to lose. Um, bit surprised Gorgas survived the hit. Then again, you know, Gorgas has a massive descent stat. One tend to forget that, but it's, it's up there. And it's a very, very scary mon. So, it won the matchup. <laughs> Which it should. It's the better ghost grass type between the two. And I am super glad to be using Gorgeist uh, for as long as I have, of course, in Star Generation. It is a super, super good mod. And of course, Johanna, thank you so much for that battle. I really, really enjoyed that game. It was so close, so interesting to the very end. I was trying to overpower you, but you played around it so well. And uh, yeah, like I said, it was it was not clear I was going to win this game whatsoever. It was no way in hell. No one could see that one coming. So, thank you so much for, of course, this battle, Hannah, and thank you everybody else who's been watching, of course, hope you like this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care.